I think we got to start this review by saying what these goggles are not. Because when Orca said they were going to be releasing an update to the Orca FPV goggles, and they had been saying for over a year that they were working on this digital HD FPV system, and they'd release it when it was ready. And then they said, we're coming to CES, and we've got new digital FPV stuff. I think a lot of people assumed that this was going to be a goggle with a new digital FPV system built into it. And it isn't. So if we go over to the left side of the goggle, we'll see a rapid fire module here in it, a traditional analog receiver module. You don't have to use rapid fire. You could use TBS Fusion or something else, although the goggle comes with a cover made for the rapid fire module. And that's probably what most people are going to choose. The goggle does not come with the analog receiver module. So as you think about the price of the goggles compared to other goggles that are out there, you'll want to take that into account. There are goggles out there that include a receiver module with them, and that may end up being cheaper for you overall. Here on the top of the goggle, we've got channel change up down buttons for easy changing of channels within a single band. Or of course, you can use the joystick on your module to access the full complement of module features. The power button here demonstrates the flexibility and configurability of Orca's software. You can configure it in menus to either turn on automatically when you apply power, like a Fat Shark goggle, or to have a single long press, or to have a short long like DJI. Whatever you're used to, the goggle can probably do it. Over here, we've got the record button for the built-in DVR. This button here brings up the battery voltage in the on-screen display. This button here controls the fans. The fans can turn on automatically with a temperature sensor. This is new in this version of the goggle, or you can manually turn the fans on by pressing this button. And we've got two joysticks here, which uh, access the goggle menus. This interface here is a proprietary digital interface, which will eventually be used with the Orca FPV system and potentially with other accessories in the future. The goggle does have an HDMI port here on the right side, uh, which can be used with the HD0 FPV system or any other HDMI source that you care to feed into the goggles. On top of that, there is also an AV in for analog input from an analog ground station. It's mostly going to be racers who are using the ground station at a race, but you could feed in any AV source via a 3.5 millimeter plug. Over here on the right side of the goggle, there is a plug for an earpiece. You could plug headphones in and get audio from your quad if your quad has a microphone on it. And there is a microphone input, which the Orca guys say I actually suggested to them in our, one of our very first meetings as a feature I would like. You can plug in a microphone like this, and then it will record ambient audio. And if you do have a microphone on your quad, the goggle will mix your quad's audio and the ambient audio together. Or what I like to do is just mute the quadcopter's audio and only record the ambient audio because I don't really have microphones on any of my quads. By the way, if you want to know what microphone I've got, I'll put a link to that microphone down in the video description. Uh, you, you have to make get one with the right plug to make sure it's going to work with the goggles. Here on the underside of the goggle, we've got two controls. One is an IPD, interpupillary distance adjustment, which allows you to adjust for how wide set your eyes are. And the other is a focus adjustment, which means that if you need corrective lenses like I do, you may be able to use this focus adjustment to avoid having to put lenses in the goggles. This is a custom cut prescription lens. It's made by a company called Optic Fisher. They're not the only one who does this, but they're the one who made this one. And until goggles started coming with built in adjustable focus, what you would do is you would buy one of these lenses based on your glasses prescription and it would slide into this channel here and it would just sit in front of your lens. And the, you can see here that the Orca goggles do still support that, which is nice because a lot of goggles today will either have built-in focus adjustment or you'll have to use a custom lens, but not both. Right above the eyepiece, we've got this slot here for the SD card. That SD card is used to record analog DVR. You can only record analog DVR. You can't record HDMI input. Uh, the DVR will look at some sample footage from the DVR in a little bit just to let you judge the quality, but it is a high quality uh, H.264 60 FPS DVR. Uh, it's one as analog DVRs go, it's up there with the best. The goggle comes with two different options for this face foam. There is a sort of leatherette style here, or this style, which is a neoprene style, very similar to the newbie drone foam that I love so much. It's very nice uh, that they have started shipping it with this. I think this is one of the best styles you can get. Uh, in fact, I just realized that it was neoprene and not fabric, and I'm going to take the leatherette style off and immediately switch to the neoprene 
see you in a second. As you can see, it Velcros on uh, the Velcro strap, the Velcro piece you install yourself when you get the goggle. It is super nice that they included this channel here. You can barely see it, but there's a, a little recession here where the Velcro piece goes because as I've installed Velcro pieces on other goggles in the past, getting it centered up and aligned correctly can be a real pain in the butt. So having that channel there to show me exactly where the Velcro should go was super nice. The head strap on the FPV Pilot goes through this little buckle here and then folds around and Velcros together. And if you compare that to the FPV-1, which had a little gap in its head strap retainer, and after the head strap started to wear out, it could just slip right out like while you were wearing them potentially, this is a big improvement. However, it must be said that all the aftermarket straps that are made for Fat Shark style goggles will, they'll typically have like a snap or something and that snap will not fit through this gap. So you may not be able to use aftermarket head straps like the Fat Straps or the Hot Dog FPV or something like that. Uh, you may be stuck using the Orca strap. Speaking of batteries, here's what else comes with the Orca goggles when you get them. No power cable? No power cable? Really? Nope. Foam pack, hard case, strap. That's it. You probably got some batteries laying around. It can take up to 6S voltage. So if you've got spare 6S batteries laying around and an XD60 to barrel connector, or if you've got some old Fat Shark style batteries, it'll work with all of them. And it now does have rever reverse polarity protection. So if you're one of the few people who accidentally wired up your battery lead backwards and blew your Orca FPV ones and had to send them in for repair, this one won't blow up if you accidentally wire it backwards. That's nice. Well, okay, enough talking about the outside of the goggles. Let's actually look inside the goggles and I wanna show you the menus. Yes, the menus on this goggle are so good. So here we go, the goggle menu in three, two, one. Oh, and like, I shouldn't be this impressed that a piece of consumer electronics has like a functional user interface. And if you fly with the DJI goggles, then you're not impressed at all because they also have a functional user interface. But so many FPV goggles just have like the barest minimum of weirdo, uh, non-intuitive user interfaces. And like, it's a low bar, but yay, Orca actually achieves it. So what do we got in here? Uh, let's start with the goggle settings. Uh, if we go in here, we can change the input source from AV to HDMI or have it auto switch. The field of view mode can be switched from freestyle to racer. Uh, the racer field of view basically just makes the screen a smidge smaller to help you see the whole screen at once, which relates to this specification that got worse between the V1 and V2 that we are gonna get to eventually. I like to fly with freestyle and have the biggest possible screen though, and the fan speed can be turned up or down. If we go to the image settings, uh, we, this is where we will change the actual image that you see in the goggles. And it's very nice that they've got this picture in picture in the lower right that shows, uh, you know, you can see the results of what you're doing. We've also got the choice of analog aspect ratio, either 4.3 or 16.9, depending on the analog signals don't like have an aspect ratio. Uh, the camera is just transmitting the signal and the goggle will stretch it as needs be. So you would want to set this to match whatever your camera was uh, on your quad. Now the goggle has so many settings that they also give you the option to load and save user profiles. So if you have different ways you like your goggle to be set up, maybe one for racing or one for freestyle, maybe one for HD zero uh, and one for analog, you can set those user profiles and easily load and save them. Uh, move between them. And then these last two options are used to help you uh, ensure that the goggle is focused correctly for your eyes. Uh, and it's such a little thing, uh, but such a nice thing. Uh, the head tilt alarm, is, the goggle has a uh, accelerometer in it that will detect if you're dropping your head like a lot of people will just go like this when they fly and then your patch antenna is pointing down at the ground. So it'll beep, 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 beep to remind you to pick your head up. That's kind of clever. And in the button settings, this is one of my favorite uh, choices is I like to move the joystick from the left side to the right side uh, because uh, I, I find that the antennas get in the way of my hand when I reach up to get at this joystick. I like to move it over to the right side and just uh, be able to reach up and get at this joystick. So 
Here in the DVR menu, one of the changes I'm gonna make is I'm gonna turn the microphone volume down from, to about a three. Uh, in my experience for this microphone, uh, it was a little too hot and was clipping when I had it turned up any higher than that. And I'm gonna turn the receiver volume all the way down to zero because I don't have microphones on any of my quads and I don't want to uh, record any audio from there. Now I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate the connectivity menu too because it requires the FPV Connect. That is a separate board. I think it sells for $79 and it goes in the right side of the goggles right here. I actually have one of those. It's in my Orca V1s which are currently sent back to Orca for service so I can't demonstrate it to you. But what it lets you do is connect to your phone. There's an FPV Connect app on your phone you can live stream the goggle feed to the phone over Wi-Fi. You can download DVR files and you can configure the goggle. All of the stuff that you're seeing me do here in the goggle can also be done in the app. So now you know everything that you could possibly want to know about this goggle, except the one thing that is actually like the most important thing, which is the image quality. And this is going to be a tough one to demonstrate, but I am going to do my best. As far as the specs of the goggle goes, it's on par with the other top tier goggles on the market. 1280 by 960 resolution OLED screen. And that's the same specs as the Fat Shark HD02 and the Skyzone Sky04X, which are, I think, the peers of this goggle. But there's more to image quality than just the screen resolution. And that goes back to the optics. So this micro display has lenses in front of it, which make the screen appear a certain distance from your eye, they make the screen appear a certain size, and they relate to how precisely the goggle has to be centered on your eye for you to see the screen without it being distorted. And the reason this is gonna be difficult for me to demonstrate is that I can take a GoPro, and I will, take a GoPro and put it in the screen and show you what the GoPro sees, but that's not exactly the same as having your eye literally in the screen. It's not gonna be lined up exactly right. And furthermore, you're not watching this on a color calibrated display, and this GoPro is not a color calibrated camera. So if I show you images, and I will, from inside the screen, and one of them looks like it has a little more contrast or shadow detail, you won't know whether that's actually what you would see when you look in the goggles. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that I have not made this footage full screen. And the reason for that is this is 1080p widescreen GoPro footage, but I want you to see the full size of the 4.3 1280 by 960 screen that the Orca has. So you can see both of those here. Whereas if I were to make it full screen, this is what it would look like if you were feeding in a 720p image. This is the approximate field of view you would get compared to this is the size of a 4.3 image and the full size of the screen. Now we come to the Fat Shark HD02, and there's a little quirk to these goggles that's going to affect how we present the results. They can only display a 16 by 9 image on the HDMI input. That means that even though the screen is 1280 by 960 resolution, which is 4 by 3, you only see 1280 by 720, a smaller field of view. So I'm going to feed it that 1280 by 720 signal so you can see what a 16 by 9 image looks like. And then I'm also going to feed it an analog signal so you can see just the full size of the screen if you were to fly it on analog. But if you fly it with digital, you're only going to be flying it with widescreen cameras you're not gonna be able to take full advantage of. Well, you could feed it a four by three image, but it would be 16 by nine in the goggles. It would be squished. And in this case, I am gonna full screen the video uh, so that you can see the whole thing because it, this is the large, this is the only way it can display it. It can't display 4.3. Now let me switch this over to the analog input so you can see the full size of the screen, what it would look like if you were flying on analog. So now you've had the chance to look inside the goggles with the GoPro, as flawed as that is, and start to form your own opinions. Now is the part for me to give you my subjective opinions uh, from actually looking in them. And we got to address that thing I've been teasing the whole video, the spec that Orca made worse between the V1 and the V2, the Orca FPV pilot. And that spec is the field of view, the size of the screen. So the Skyzone 
and the uh, HDO2 have a field of view of about 43 degrees. And when I say the size of the screen, I don't mean literally the size of the actual micro display. I mean the, the magnification of the screen by the optical lenses inside the goggles that makes it appear to be a certain size as you put the goggles on your face. 43 degrees field of view. The field of view for the FPV pilot is 38 degrees and that is noticeably smaller. Now I'm going to start with the good news. The good news is that 38 degrees is objectively, I do say objectively, it is objectively fine. It's fine. If you showed me a goggle with like a 25 degree field of view like the Ishin EV100, I would just say it is such a small screen, objectively I feel like you are going to be missing information that you need to see in order to fly. 38 degrees is fine, but it is less than 43 degrees and many people feel that they like the larger, more immersive field of view of the 43 degree screen. Many people feel that they like the smaller 38 degree field of view because it lets them see the whole screen without uh, moving their eyes around. And the objective advantage of the smaller field of view is that there is more uh, relief. There is less sensitivity to where your eye is located relative to the optic where you can see the whole screen without distortion. On the HDO2 and the Skyzone Skyo 4X, you pretty much have to have the goggles centered up perfectly and you sometimes have to kind of bump them up or down a little bit to get them to line up so you can see the entire screen without like a corner getting cut off. And maybe sometimes a corner is cut off and it's not that big a deal. On the Orcas, there's a little bit more flexibility there. But the other reason that Orca says they made the field of view a little bit smaller is due to optical image quality. You see, lenses always have the best image quality at the center of the lens. And as you get out to the edges of the lens, you get more distortion. And Orca says that they wanted, uh, the original V1 goggles had just a little bit of pin cushion distortion where the image was warped in slightly. And they said they wanted to fix that. I don't think they did. As I look at the uh, Orcas versus the Fat Sharks and the Sky 4 xs the Orcas still have pin cushion distortion. And that's not just something the GoPro's doing. That's something I see when my put, put face in the goggles. If that was their goal, I don't think they succeeded. The other thing they claim, and I do think they succeeded, is to give the maximum image fidelity, the maximum contrast and saturation and blacks and whites. And, and as I look in the Orca versus the Fat Shark and the Sky Zone, I do notice that the colors, the blacks, etc., are just better on the Orca. And I, I assume that has to do with their optics because I think I think that these guys are all using the same screens. So there are going to be people out there for whom the 38 degree field of view on the Orca is a deal breaker. And I don't think it should be a deal breaker for everyone. Although if you know for a fact that you really value the largest field of view possible, then you're going to want to look at the Sky Zone or the Fat Shark. Um, but for most pilots for whom field of view is not the primary determining characteristic, there are a lot of other things to like about the Orca, which I've shown you in this video, uh, and that field of view is going to be okay. Especially when you consider that the Fat Shark and the Sky Zone both do weirdo fiddly things with their HDMI input, like the Fat Shark not being able to show a 4.3 or the Sky Zone doing this weirdo stretching thing. However, if you are going to be feeding a 16.9 widescreen image into the Orcas, bear in mind that your field of view is going to be only 33 degrees because it's going to get smaller still. And in that case, I think the Fat Sharks are going to be much more appealing because although they can only display a 4.3 screen, it's much, much bigger and takes up much more of your field of view. Well, we can't really review these goggles without talking about their price. The Orcas are $570 without an analog receiver module, antennas, battery, or any of those accessories. The Fat Sharks are $500 without a module, antenna, etc., and all those accessories. And the Sky Zones are $520, but they do come with a module, and the receiver module in the Sky Zones is pretty good, although not perfect. If you are gonna buy an analog receiver module, a premium module like TBS Fusion or Immersion RC Rapid Fire is going to run you between $110 and $130. So that is an edge for the Sky Zones here. If you wanted a mid tier module like a Foxier Wildfire, it would be about $80. But the real competitor for all of these goggles, once we're into the $550 ish dollar price point, has to be DJI. And 
you just have to acknowledge that you could get the DJI goggles for $550. And a Caddx Vista or similar video transmitter is $150 or $160, which is way more expensive than an analog system, but not that much more expensive than a Shark Bites or HD Zero system. Whether these goggles are going to really appeal to you, I think depends a lot on how committed you are to analog and or how committed you are to HD zero. But if you're like, yeah, I could go either way. A lot of people are just gonna get the DJI goggles and then what are you gonna do for analog reception? Well, that's a different question. What about Orca's digital FPV system? Should you buy the Orca FPV goggles with the anticipation that you will eventually use that? I say no. And the reason I say no is that it's so far out and all we've seen are a couple of manufacturing prototypes with no actual confirmation of capabilities, features, no independent testing of performance. Based on where Orca seems to be in their development pipeline, based on what we saw at CES, I would guess that we will not see products in stores at least until the end of this year, 2022. That's just a guess, but I just don't think you should be buying these goggles today with the hope that that product will come out in a timely manner and that that product will be as good as you hope it will be. This is a nice bonus, but I don't think this should be the reason that you choose these goggles over something else. And that Orca FPV system is expected to have HDMI out anyway, so if it does come out and it's awesome, you will potentially be able to use it with any of these other goggles anyway, although you may be missing out on some features that are specific to this input. Now at this point, if you're ready to buy these goggles, then there are links in the video description and they are affiliate links, which means that when you make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, after you click that link, you could buy these goggles or you could buy anything else, click the link, make your purchase, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. On the other hand, if you still want more information, I'm going to refer you to my review of the Skyzone Sky 04X. Uh, this is a damn good goggle, especially at the price point. Uh, and it might just be the best value, maybe not the best performance, but the best value in analog goggles today. I'll put a card here on screen if you want to go check that out, as well as a couple other cards for another video you might like, and uh, my Patreon. Is today the day that I have earned your support? for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. If today's that day, click the link, go on over, join my Patreon and support me. If not, I'll keep making content and hopefully someday that day will come. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.